would be Tim Spencer, who last week was hobbled with an ankle injury and played sparingly in Ohio State's conquest of Indiana, but has responded in practice this week and should see quite a bit of playing time today. He shares the tailback position with Jimmy Gale, who had a super afternoon against the Hoosiers. Walter Pisa to put it in the air for the Boilermakers of Purdue, who were three successive Big Ten wins right back in the thick of the race and a chance to wind up in Pasadena on New Year's Day. So a capacity crowd looking on. Here we go. Trapezius kick is deep. Spencer will down it in the end zone, and Ohio State will take over at its own 20-yard line. Now the Buckeyes with Heisman candidate Arch Schleister at quarterback, 6'3", 208-pounder. You've got Vaughn Broadnex, the big, burly fullback. He weighs 252. You've got Jimmy Gale and also Tim Spencer seeing a lot of time at the tailback spot. One wide out is Cedric Anderson, and the other, Gary Williams, highlighted both of those fellas on the pregame show. First down for Ohio State from the 20-yard line. As they come up in the eye, the tailback getting the start is Spencer. Anderson wide to the right, shift out of the eye now. Split backs for brought next the other back, and it's Spencer stopped at the 19-yard line. A loss of one. Mike Moreland, number 95, leads the charge. William Roberts, 6'5", 258, is the left tackle. Scott Zelensky out of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Jim DeLeon is the center. Joe Lukens, All-America candidate, 258-pounder at right guard. The right tackle, Joe Smith at 256 and the tight end is a good one John Frank who has caught 25 passes this season second down 11 Buckeyes from the 19 yard line Jimmy Gale now in a tailback and it's Gale taking the pitch out past the 25 the 30 and a first down to the 35 yard line Robert Williams the cornerback number 36 making the tackle Gale last week picked up 186 yards against Indiana with Spencer's time limited due to the ankle injury. Defensively, Hernandez, Moore, and Moreland up front for Purdue. Gladstone, Brown, SPAC is a good one. 58 and Dave Fry, the linebackers. Taylor, Williams, and the safeties, both outstanding. Seneff and McKinney. First down at the 35-yard line with Spencer back in, working from the split-back formation. And it's Spencer, no room over the left side, stopped at the line of scrimmage by Marcus McKinney and Brock Spax, back number 58. Interesting strategy here, Al, because on second down, when they had 11 yards to go, Ohio State, uh, Purdue substituted two defensive secondary people. They had six secondary people in, and what happened was a 15-yard gain by Gale. This time on second and long, no substitutions. They're staying with a standard run defense. And as you suggested, some probing going on at the outset. Ohio State opening up with three running plays. Second down, 10 from the 35-yard line. Go back! Anderson in motion. Off the play fake. Schleister setting up. Has time. Going deep for Williams. Makes the catch at the 26-yard line. Covered by Robert Williams, but a perfectly thrown pass to Gary Williams. Number 44, a junior out of Wilmington, Delaware. Beautifully thrown pass here by Schleister. Fix a little run action in here. He sees him one-on-one, -on -one and he throws the ball a long way. Williams and Williams, 44, as you see, makes a great catch on it. Robert Williams cannot cover number 36. Here's another look at it. He just comes straight up the field one-on-one, -on -one, no support for him, and he runs by Robert Williams, and Gary makes his 32nd catch of the season. And catches a pass in his 32nd consecutive game. 39-yard gain on first down from the 26-yard line. It's Spencer through the middle with a little bit of room. Loses the ball to the 20, and Purdue has it. The Boilermakers come up with it as Andy Gladstone makes the recovery. So Ohio State moving downfield and in a hurry and giving up the football to Purdue at the 20. Well, it's a big break for Purdue because certainly Ohio State was on the move. It's just an isolation play right over the middle. Spencer has the ball. He's got a good blocking hole here, but he loses the ball. It's knocked out by someone putting the helmet right on it. I believe it was Mike Moreland, number 95. Boilermakers take over from the 20-yard line and move in on the right side of the line. Looks like the right guard was in motion prior to the snap. Flags go down, and we'll get an illegal procedure call, most likely, against Purdue. I think I said Wilmington, Delaware, by the way, on Gary Williams. People in Ohio, there's a Wilmington, Ohio, of course, and that's where Gary is from. <laughs> right. 
You know it well. You've recruited that's there. It. Not only that, that's near my wife's uh, home, Greenfield. Purdue, you saw Campbell. There's Wally Jones, the fullback. Robert Pruitt also sees action at that spot. Jimmy Smith is their leading ground gainer. We talked about Steve Bryant earlier. The other wide out is Joe Linville, former quarterback. First and 15 from the 15. Campbell off the fake. Nearly has it picked off, but we've got a flag thrown. Contact out of the 21-yard line on the pass intended for Linville. Sean Gale, whose brother Jimmy is the Ohio State tailback, Covering on the play. Pass interference is the call against Gale. And then it'll move it back out. Defense. First down. Offense. Moving it back out to the 21-yard line. You know, the Linville signals which type of route he's going to run. Now, this is the whirly bird here. He just turns. You see Campbell turning. Delivers the ball. You cannot see there whether or not contact was made by Sean Gale. It's very difficult. On first down, it's Jimmy Smith over the right side for no gain. Boy, Foster, it looked like Foster, 55, made a great play in there. Fritchie is the left tackle, 268-pounder. Gunner weighs in at 237. Royer, the center, at 240. The right guard is Claybon Fields. He's a junior, weighs in at 277. Tom Jaleski at 273. A lot of bulk on the right side. Cliff Benson, the sophomore tight end, at 220. Second down, 10. Boilermakers from their own 21-yard line. Early in the first quarter, no score. Out of the eye, it is Smith. It's out to the 24. Chris Ream making the tackle, number 93. It'll be third down and seven. Buckeyes defensively. Keep your eye on Foster, 55. A good one. Miller and Ream who made the last stop. The two linebackers in the middle, both exceptional. Glenn Cobb, 35. Marcus Merrick, All-America candidate, 36. And the secondary. Third down, seven. Boilermakers from the 24-yard line. First man through is a fullback, Wally Jones, who gets wrapped up immediately in the Boilermakers. And in the punting unit, Glenn Cobb, 35 made the initial contact for the Buckeyes. I think, Al, Al, you can see the importance of the game. Third down situation, rather than to take any high-risk passing plays, they elect to run a little trap play inside, punt it away, count on their defense, which has been successful during the year. That's Garcia Lane, back deep for Ohio State, standing at the Buckeye 30. Matt Kinzer, who's averaging 39.8 per tick, his longest this season, 57 yards. Kick, decent distance, fair catch called for at the 35 and made there by Garcia Lane. So Ohio State will take over for the second time offensively after a 40-yard kick. We played four minutes and 20 seconds, and there's no score. Beginning this drive from the 35-yard line. Out of the eye, sleeps through the quarterback. To Spencer. Spencer takes it out to the 37. Pick up a two, close to three. Call it second down, eight. But Cedric Anderson, number 22, cracked, cracked back and made quite a block. As long as you block up above the waist, you're okay. He really cracked back and made a whale of a block, even though the play didn't make that much yardage. Interesting, Harris Spencer was hurt a couple of weeks ago, suffered the ankle injury, played sparingly last week. But, of course, when your opposite number, a fellow like Yale, has the day he did, you'll get healthier in a hurry, won't you? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Didn't take Spencer very long to recuperate. Sleaser short drop. High oh. pass is caught one-handed by Gary Williams. Good exhibition there of how sure-handed he is. Boy, a beautiful pass reception. It would look like it was overthrown from here. He just runs an out pattern. Here we are. You see him turn away, but it looked like Sleaster had thrown the ball over his head. Look at that right hand go up, and he gobbles up the ball before Williams again. They're picking on him a little bit. Next tackle the 49 now. First and 10 Buckeyes. Spencer. Can't turn the corner and ridden down in Purdue territory at the 47 yard line by Derek Taylor, the cornerback number three, a junior out of Hackensack, New Jersey. And Marcus McKinney, the senior from Barberton, Ohio. Happy Halloween to you. Bob Euchre is here. He's everywhere. 
Hunter's having quite a year. He's at uh, 672 yards with seven touchdowns and a long gainer of 82 yards. So he's got great speed. He's out right now as Jimmy Gale comes in. Gale and Broadnax are the running backs. On second down and five off a of quick count, it's Gale. Taking it to the 43-yard line and setting up a third down and a long two, Dave Fry and Mark Brown. Fry 60, Brown 59, making the stop. One of the ways to counteract the junk defense when they're moving around so much is to go on a quick count. And I noticed that Sleister has done so in the last two or three plays before they can get adjusted. Otherwise, they'll sit up the line, let them settle down, and then call an audible. But he's been going quick. Third down, two and a half from the 44. And Sleister to put it up. Good protection. Throws to the tight end. Completed the 37 to John Frank, number 89, making his 26th reception of the season. Brock Spack, perhaps the best defensive player on the Purdue squad. Number 58, making the stop. First down for the Buckeyes. Ohio State has really looked sharp in these two drives. Sleister stood right in there. He's getting good protection and really finding the receivers and delivering. Buckeyes at the 36. First and ten. Sleister giving it off to Spencer. It's down to the 31-yard line. Mark Brown making the stop. It'll be second down and five. I'll tell you, the three yards in the cloud of dust thing, it's ancient history now. Ohio State, if you, if you think about it, Eric, not that long ago, third down, two and a half, they would never go to the air. But that time, Schleister picking up the first down. As, as you can see this year, Ohio State with a balanced attack with more yardage through the air than on the ground. Second down and five from the 31. Puts his head down and gets to the 28-yard line. It'll be third down and two. Again, it's Brock Spack making the tackle. It was very obvious that time that uh, Sleister saw an opening over the right side, and you saw him call the audible, but uh, Purdue, Purdue Boilermakers closed it up very quickly. Third down, two. 7.40 to go, first quarter. No score. Sir. Wrapped up by David Fry, number 60, with some help from Spack. Fry came clear from the backside. He lined up a defensive end. The play developed so slowly that he came right down the line of scrimmage. Now, when you see that sort of thing happen, Al, where the end comes in and takes some chokes off of a, an off-tackle play or an inside play on the far side, look out for reverses. It becomes vulnerable to it. Ohio State will attempt a field goal from the 36-yard line. That's Bob Atha, who kicked five last week. To set a school record. A 46-yard attempt is long enough, but wide. Wide to the left. So Ohio State comes up empty. Purdue gets the ball back with 6.51 remaining. First quarter in West Lafayette. Purdue nothing, Ohio State nothing. 6.51 remaining in the first quarter. Ross A. Stadium, West Lafayette, no score. Purdue, its second possession. This drive beginning from the Boilermaker 29-yard line. Campbell, good fake, has time, man wide open at the 31 is Tom Barr, who takes it out to the 37-yard line. Gain of about eight. Marcus Merrick. Number 36, the All-American candidate, the linebacker for the Buckeyes, making the tackle. Great breakoff tackle by Campbell. He's really a clever quarterback. Doesn't rush himself. Quick release to Barr, crossing underneath, wide open. And you can see here, Ken, you can see the reason that this man is, I'm talking about Campbell, the number one passing efficiency man in the country. He's cool. Second down, a yard and a half from the 37. And Smith going to the outside and can't turn the corner and drop just about at the line of scrimmage. Good pursuit, Doug Hill, number 27, finally wrestling him down. Jim Young spent four years at Arizona, now in his fifth year at Purdue. His record there with the Boilermakers, low-key, steady, and innovative. 
He's done a great job here, really has. Taken him to bowls, put him on the winning side of the ledger. He's been a winner everywhere that he's been, all the way through high school and colleges. Third down, two. Double tight end set up and a timeout. Asked for and granted as Campbell looked over the defense. So the Boilermakers will discuss this one as they spend their first time out with 532 remaining in the first quarter. Let's go back to the top of the game, Harris. Some interesting uh, by play in the end zone before Earl Bruce let his Buckeyes come out. And the same thing on the other side with Jim Young. It was really funny from up here being as a former football coach. Uh, I think Earl Bruce had decided he was not going to take the Buckeyes on the field before the Boilermakers came on, and they stood there waiting and waiting, and finally Jim Young started to send his players on one at a time about every five or six seconds. Bruce still didn't move, and finally Jim Young, I guess, acquiesced, came onto the field, and then the Boilermakers came on. I don't know. The strategy, whether who's going to be on the field first or last, I, it never did bother me, I guess, but sometimes in these games of importance, they feel psychologically every little advantage might be theirs or it might affect the opposition. Earl Bruce. All wired up. I tell you, he's done a great job there, too. 25 and 6. I tell you, that's a great winning percentage. Third down and two out of the stack guy from the 37-yard line. Smith getting out to the 39. From here, it looks like he has the first down. See where they spot it. Marker right on the 39, and it is a first down. I thought uh, what was impressive on Scott Campbell, you know, he's just a sophomore. He came up the line of scrimmage, third down and one, did not like what he saw. He knew he had a bad play on, called timeout, and they came out, changed the play, and they made the first down. On first and ten, Jones to the 44-yard line where Glenn Cobb makes the stop. Glenn Cobb, a junior from Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Co-captain of the Buckeyes. Boilermakers, winners of 21 of their last 22 and the last nine in a row here at Ross Age Stadium. Second down, call it six from the 44. Straight drop by Campbell. Bryant is wide open into Ohio State territory. And down he goes at the 44-yard line. Kelvin Bell making the tackle. The thing that's impressed me about Campbell is the quick release that he has. He sees the one-on-one. -on -one. They're trying to blitz him, trying to come in here and put pressure on him. He's looking like the release. Boy, the ball's gone right now, and it's right on the mark for Bryant. And, of course, Bell comes in, makes the tackle. He's out there alone, and he's shaken that tackle. It's been a long, long game. Just by that, he's gone. Yeah. There they get. Just an out pattern. You see that Bell's giving him a big cushion. And, of course, it's an easy reception, but he does make a sure tackle. Gain of 12, first down from the 44. Campbell setting up. Another man wide open to the 39 is Cliff Benson inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. Kelvin Bell on the other side this time, again making the tackle. Somebody made a mistake on the Ohio State defense. Nobody was out in the right flat. Not see it from this angle, but you'll see Campbell come back. He's looking to the right, and then he turns to the left, and he finds Benson wide open. No one is out there. You see no one deep behind him. Now you see number four, Bell. It was back in a deep safety. Griggs comes over and helps make the play. Anthony Griggs. First down, Boilermakers on the move at the Buckeye 25. Jones to the short side of the field gets tripped up and out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Mike D'Andrea, senior from Akron, Ohio, making the stop and stopping the clock with 352 to go in the quarter. No score. Well, I think that Purdue is breaking the tendency that they had. Wally Jones had only carried the ball 26 times in the previous seven games, so they're probably anchoring and team on Smith, and they're running Jones more than they have in any other previous game just to break the tendency. Give the Buckeyes something else to think about. Second down and six from the 22-yard line. Split back this time. Everybody goes into the pattern. The fake, then to Bryant, and incomplete. He short hopped it at the 10. Again, they were working in Bell's area. He made a good pump fake away from Bell. Bell did come open, but Campbell threw the ball a little bit low. And 
as you saw, Bryant almost did get the ball, but I guess it took the ground before he was able to capture it. That's Campbell's first incomplete pass of the day at the 22-yard line. It's third down, six. Split Bryant to the right. Campbell. Big opening inside the 20, inside the 15, to the 11. between Campbell and the man that he has succeeded, Mark Herman. Exactly. Herman was not a runner, and you see Campbell here, who's a tremendous football player. He doesn't see anybody open. Watch him find the daylight inside. He takes it immediately, runs for the goal line, and picks up the first down. A tremendous play. Glenn Cobb, number 35, finally brought him down. He was back deploying in zone defense, but that's the dimension that Purdue has in Campbell, and that's why he's number one in efficiency. Boilermakers at the Buckeye 12, first and 10. Fake to Smith. Campbell protected well again. The back game, touchdown. The Purdue Boilermakers go up on top on a well-conceived drive. Benson, the tight end number 81, making the catch for the score. Well executed play here. He just makes the tailback off tackle. Benson comes from the right side. Watch Sean Gale right there at number two fall down. And that's the reason he was not able to make the tackle at the five-yard line. Still a well executed play. Tim Clark will get the extra point. Clark who had half of his right foot amputated when he was 18 months old because of a lawnmower accident. Boots it through, 3-11 to go in the quarter, it's 7-0 Purdue. Purdue. Amputated, uh, Tom Dempsey-like story, specially made kicking shoe on his right foot. He's taken over as the Purdue place kicker from the heralded Rick Anderson. A look at the specially conceived shoe. He does not do the kicking off, however, it's the pizza. We'll push it into the end zone and down there by Spencer. And Ohio State starts this drive from the 20-yard line. Purdue, 10 plays, going 71 yards, took them 340. Well executed, well planned, era. And also, you make a very good point, Al, when you remind us that Campbell took that timeout, did not waste the down on that third down situation where he didn't like what he saw, knew he had a bad play on, took the timeout then and used it well. With Spencer, the tailback. Broadneck, the fullback. With Spencer, trying the left side again. Out to the 23-yard line, where Mark Brown and Casey Moore. Brown, 59. Moore, 98. In on the tackle. Well, when you can kick that ball in the end zone, make your opposition go 80 yards, it's a long way to go, I'll tell you. Grind it out. You've got to have a consistent offense, and this is what Ohio State is faced with right now. Second and seven. They send Williams wide left. Anderson wide to the right. Glaser with time and incomplete. The intended receiver at the 25-yard line was Jimmy Gale, blanketed on the play by Brock Spack. They're trying to cross that tight end over there, and Spack was right on it. You see right here, isolated on Spock, he picks up the tight end crossing right there. Oh, that's not tight end, that's Jimmy Gale. I didn't realize that. Yes, Jimmy Gale. Tailback going into the pattern. Third down and seven from the 23-yard line. Gleister, under pressure, has to scramble. Sacked at the nine. Marcus McKinney blitzing through number 34 along with the linebacker Andy Gladstone, 86, pushing Ohio State back. They spotted at the 10 and the Buckeyes to putt. Put a six-man rush on here, brought the free safety, Marcus McKinney. There's Hernandez being blocked, number 71. There's McKinney, number 43 and 34, rather 34, 43 set up. The strong safety is also in their rushing. Fourth down and 20, Bob Asa, who's the second-team quarterback, 
and does the place kicking and the punting to boot it away. Scott Craig back deep for Purdue. Fair catch called for at the Purdue 45-yard line. 142 remaining in the first period. Watermakers beginning this drive at their own 45 after a 45-yard punt. Purdue leading 7 to nothing. There's a big kick out of there, 45 yards. He's kicking out of his own end zone. The drove, drove at least Purdue back in their own territory. Campbell, sophomore out of Percy, Pennsylvania. Giving it to Jones. Jones picking up three. Sean Gale making the tackle. Remember last year, Scott Campbell, a freshman, Mark Herman, was hurt the week before the Notre Dame game, which was a national telecast at the beginning of the season era. And it was Campbell who came on under a lot of pressure, the nation watching, and he acquitted himself very well in the losing cause. Did very well for a freshman stepping into that kind of a pressure situation. Second down, call it six. Campbell to Bryant at the 37-yard line. Doug Hill covering. Boy, you think he didn't hum that in there. He's clear on the right hash mark. Campbell's on the right hash. Bryant now is on the left hash and runs an out pattern. That's as far as you have to throw it. And he runs away from Doug Hill on single coverage. And Campbell puts it right there. Perfect. At the Buckeye 38-yard line, first and 10. Campbell to Jones, who juggles, recovers, keeps possession, and dropped it to 31 by Sean Gale. Well, Purdue has a great quarterback tradition, Bob Greasy. As you take a look graphically, Len Dawson before Greasy, then came Mike Phipps, Gary Danielson, Mark Herman. And from what we've seen in the first quarter, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Campbell's going to have a rightful place amongst those. Well, I had to face a few of those guys, and they taught me a few lessons, I'll tell you. Campbell now six out of seven for 70 yards. Second and three. A lot of time. Everybody covered, and Campbell finds Jones, has the first down at the 24-yard line. Marcus Merritt made the stop. There's another example of a scrambling quarterback. They had a three-man rush on. They finally uh, flushed him out of the pocket, but he runs outside, and he can't cover people for that length of time. Watch here. He comes back into the pocket. Three men cannot reach him. Finally, he's flushed out to the right. As you see here, he sees Jones, delivers it right on. It's very tough. Merrick finally brings him down, but they're down to the 25. First and 10. Jones for a couple. Jim Young ready to send in the play. With the wide receiver Everett Pickens. Meanwhile, the first quarter has expired. Purdue with one impressive drive, 71 yards for a touchdown. And in the midst of another, at the end of the first period, Purdue seven and Ohio State nothing. He escaped the first man through, but then goes down back at the 32-yard line. Roland Tatum, number 32. Yeah, he was a delayed blitz on his part. He was standing in there as a linebacker. He waited until Campbell got into the pocket. Then he rushed. No one picked him up, and he put the heat on him. What's it called? A delayed blitz. Third down, 19. For the first time today, Purdue out of the shotgun. With Bryant in motion. Campbell looking for Bryant. Nearly intercepted at the 25-yard line. Bryant has gone all the way across the field, the intended receiver. And it's Jeff Sisko who had it in his hands and couldn't hold on. Well, I'll tell you, that was a great piece of defensive work on the part of Ohio State. Good calls. They had defensive secondary people in here, five or six of them. You see the shotgun, and this is one of the few passes. I don't think that uh, Campbell's been intercepted for I don't know how many throws. And 24, Jeff Sisko almost picks it off there. Should have had it. He's been intercepted only five times this season, four of those in one game. On 
Fourth and 19, they will go for it on the 33 yard line. Campbell setting up and incomplete. Covered well on the play was Everett Pickens, the intended receiver, but he was surrounded. So Purdue feeling they were out of field goal range, going for it, fourth and long, and turning the ball over as you look at the numbers through the first period. Well, you can see the dominance of Purdue in the first quarter. They had a tremendous quarter, doubling the first down. Uh, yards rushing were pretty even, as you see. Passing yardage, there was a difference outside of the first drive that Ohio State had. Why, uh, they haven't done much. But they do have what wind is blowing this afternoon. They do have it here in the second quarter. First down for the 32. Schleister to put it up right away. Flag goes down as the catch is made at the 39-yard line by Anderson. And a marker down at the 46. Looks like either offensive or defensive interference downfield. The back judge threw the flag. Referee today is Jerry Hendrickson. Don Mason, Rich Weiler, Tom Hoffman, Jim Kimberling, and Chuck McCallum round out the crew. It's a holding call against the Boilermakers. Earl Bruce, third year at the Buckeye Helm. The officials give us a call here. Holding by the defense. First down. I think it was in the secondary, Al, because they cut something down off the tight end. But I wasn't sure who it, who it was that uh, was the violator. It definitely was. Flag went down at the 46. So the penalty takes him out to the 48 on first down off the play fake. Schleister has some pressure. going for Williams, but he's double covered. Andy Gladstone was the man who put the pressure on Schleister that time. Marcus McKinney and Robert Williams providing the double coverage on Gary Williams. Tried to go one-on-one -on, -one on Gary, faked to the wide side of the field, but he got an, a lot of immediate pressure. Did not have much time. Otherwise, uh, it could have been a completion. He overthrew him on the play because he was rushed. Schuster's got a strong arm. He, too, has a very quick release, very fine quarterback. Just had a tremendous career at Ohio State. Second down, 10 from the 48-yard line. With Anderson in motion. Schuster for the screen to Gale. Breaks the tackle inside the 40, inside the 30, and down to the 26-yard line. Well-executed screen. Mark Brown finally catches up with him, and Ohio State with a first down to the 26-yard line. Great, great running here. He sets up the screen to the right. Fry almost makes a super play, number 60 for Purdue. Purdue. He fights through the blockers. Watch 60 come right through and fight through the blockers. And he misses Gale, doing a great job of running. Gale hits for, hits for the middle of the field. A big play. Finally, Mark Brown, number 59, brings him down. First down to the 26-yard line. Schleister is five out of seven for 89 yards. That last play covering 26. Spencer to the 24. Mark Brown again <laughs> making the stop. How about that fella. I'd like to have him playing defense for me one of these days. <laughs> you had a few like that. That's Butkus, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's a beauty. Or maybe she. <laughs> Second down, eight at the 24 yard line. 12 47 remaining, first half. Schleister tries to dump it off and does to the fullback broad next. And he's dropped at the 31-yard line. Brock Spack was the man who came in to put the pressure on Schleister. Aren't able to dump it off. They still lose yardage, but less than they would have. Watch, he's almost in Schleister's lap right here. Right, right through there. Nobody picks him up. He puts his right between the center and the guard. Look at the reaction by Schleister. He gets the ball away. Otherwise, he'd had more negative yardage. But what a reaction on his part. He had no chance. Third down. 31-yard line. Williams in motion. Flag 
is thrown. I think the tight end, Frank, was in motion before the snap. And the play is whistled dead. Number 89 got off the line before the snap. And that's going to cost Ohio State five. Now oh, they had people all over the place. The backs were jumping. There was motion. And I think Frank's moved before the snap also. Five-yard penalty, moving it back to the 36-yard line. Dead ball foul, illegal procedure, offense, third down. Some of the follow, excuse me, Al, some of the followers of the Buckeyes said that you know, yet last night that uh, I'll, I'll, I'll follow up on it right after this play. Third down and 20 at the 36-yard line. Williams in motion again. Leister. Incomplete. Mix up on the pattern. Cedric Anderson, the intended receiver, but well covered by Derek Taylor. Picking up on what I was talking about, they were really concerned because Ohio State, they got a penalty Another here. Another penalty. Holding is the call. That they stopped themselves on 17 occasions in seven ball games on penalties of the nature that we just saw here a moment ago. So their own mistakes they have contributed to the rolling against the offense is declined the fourth down. Now you see here on a great drive that they had moving, that illegal procedure, a holding penalty, a mix up on their coverage down, not their coverage, but their pass routes. And so once again, along with Purdue's defense, they have contributed to their own problem. Ball at the 36-yard line. Bob Aita comes in. He's going to attempt a field goal. Breeze at his back. They'll spot it at the 43, so a 53-yard kick. Eighth has already missed one today. Longest of the season, 46 yards. Good distance and good. Bob Aitha puts Ohio State on the board. His 11th field goal of the season at 7-3, Purdue. take the penalty because they wanted Ohio State to have a fourth situation. It kept Aitha within range as it turned out, but it's really tough to second guess Jim Young on that call because Ohio State would have had another play. The kick into the end zone and Purdue coming out to the 20 yard line. It's tough, Eric. Even with the holding call, Young knows it's fourth down 20. Guy doesn't figure to kick a 53 yard field goal, so it's really tough to, to second guess a call like that. Well, it's a tough decision because you don't know whether you want to give him the additional down uh, which might lead to additional first downs or make them take the chance on whether Aza can make the longest field goal that he's ever made. He did it. 7-3, Purdue on top. Campbell, the sophomore, 19 years old, out of Hershey, Pennsylvania. His father, the athletic director at Hershey High School. changing the play at the line, giving it to Jones for no gain. Nick Miller and Chris Reen making the stop. 11-14 to play in the first half. Campbell from Hershey, Pennsylvania. I suppose it's appropriate. He is a pre-dentistry major. <laughs> That's a, a great profession to be in in Hershey, I would say. Sugarland, huh? <laughs> Second and ten. Jordan, the backup tailback, finds no room for the middle. Third down at 10. Nick Miller, 99 in on the stop. Well, the Ohio State defense starting to get a little stouter. Let's see whether or not Jim Young wants to take any chances down in his own 20-yard line. See whether he goes to the air. Sends Bryant to the left. Linville splitting to the right. procedure call, though Purdue thinks it was Ohio State that jumped first. Let's see. Come on, Ryan! Procedure call against Purdue. It was Cliff Benson, the first man to make movement. Number 81, the tight end. Back to the 15, 
And it will be third down and 15. And he sends in uh, Dave Rutherford to flank Dead her. ball for legal procedure against offense. He may have changed the play here, Al. Third down, 15, from the 15. Campbell to Jordan. Loses the ball at the 26-yard line, but recovers it. They're shy of the first down by four, but at least they keep possession. Well, that's a, that's a tough place on the field to lose the football. For the makers to kick on fourth down and four from the 26-yard line. Matt Kinzer to do the punting. Garcia Lane, single safety for Ohio State. Back at his own 36. Got 10 men up there. Here they come. Rush is on and it's blocked. And out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Cedric Anderson came flying through the speedy wide receiver. And Ohio State in business deep in Purdue territory. Well, see, that's great use of your personnel. It puts Cedric Anderson, the flanker back, who's got great speed, in on the punt rush. Watch him come in, right from the right side, free, reaches out, launches himself, and gets that ball. Big turnover, great play for the Buckeyes. Ohio State at the 16, and Anderson, of course, stays in. Splitting wide to the right. Broadnack to the 14-yard line. Earl Bruce, his team, was down 7-0 in the 53-yard field goal by Atha. And now trying to move it in with 9-10 remaining in the first half. You know, sometimes you wonder whether or not Ohio State may have spotted something in the Purdue uh, blocking, punt blocking formation. And certainly no one picked up Anderson, and he made a great play. Second down and eight. On the option, it's Schleister inside the 10, all the way for the score. Art Schleister had not been running many option plays this season because he's been bothered by an ankle injury. They went to the option more last week against Indiana, and today on his first option play of the day, takes it in for the touchdown. Well, the defense was such, they caught him off balance. There's no one to option. He just keeps the ball, steps inside of the defense's secondary man. It's a secondary man clear to the outside. There's Taylor misses him, slips him, and he take, turns inside and gets the score. They caught him in an unorthodox defense, and he called the right play and ran it well. They cash in after the block hit. Mike Tomczak to hold for Bob Atha. It is good. Ethan now 21 of 22 on the season. 8.45 to go. First half at West Lafayette. Ohio State has the lead by three. He tried to make a, a tackle, and he just stepped into the end zone untouched. So the Buckeyes, just like that, back up on top. 10 to 7. Bob Ethan to kick off. Smith and Jordan are deep, and it's Smith taking it eight yards deep. He'll pick it up and down it there. And it will be first and 10 for the Boilermakers from the 20-yard line. So the complexion of the game changing very rapidly after the most impressive drive by Purdue. Ohio State, a 53-yard field goal by Asa, then the block putt, and in they go in a hurry to lead 10 to 7. And you know what they say when they talk about momentum. It has shifted completely in this game. After a dominating quarter by Purdue in the first, the second quarter has been Ohio State. Campbell, the quarterback, first and 10 Purdue from the 20 yard line. Campbell protected well, a flag is thrown. Jones, the fullback, taking it out near a first down. He's ridden out of bounds at the 29 yard line, and the penalty marker is down back at the 16. Well, the umpire threw it, and he threw it right in the area where the offensive line of Purdue is, so it's going to be a holding penalty, five or 10. You can see Young is a little concerned about it. He doesn't like it. It's only a five-yarder, though, the open hand. Illegal use of the hand. Right. Instead of a nine-yard gain. 
penalty will move it back. Geez, I don't know what's going on here, Al. Every time I brought my teams here, the officials always called the penalties on me. <laughs> Illegal use of the hands by the offense. Five yards, first down. <laughs> Five yards from the spot of the infraction back to the 11-yard line. Right. Making it first down and 19. It's Jones seeing more action today than he has all season long, taking it out to the 14-yard line where Glenn Cobb makes the stop. field position to work in when you're working out of your own 11 yard line and it's a 10-7 ball game momentum in favor of the opposition they need a play to get out of there Jim Young knows that second down 17 Bryant split wide right Pickens split to the left off the option is Campbell they got one he's got Jones out in front of him cuts to the outside and a nice tackle made by Kelvin Bell at the 21 yard line Boy, that was a great play by Kelvin Bell. He had all kinds of running room. He went through a blocker and made the play. Super play by Kelvin Bell, just a freshman from Richmond, Virginia. Outstanding. Spotted at the 21-yard line. Third down, nine. pressure and a wobbly pass is short intended for Bryant all Campbell could do to get rid of it is Anthony Briggs was amongst the threesome that came charging in on Campbell good coverage on that Al <laughs> not that guy but he had plenty of time to throw the football but the coverage was so good no one was open on fourth down and nine from the 21 yard line it's Kinzer to kick Garcia Lane, single safety for Ohio State. The Buckeyes with 10 men up on the line. They blocked the last punt. This time they lay back so to return. It's a low line drive kick fielded by Lane at the 45 into Purdue territory and down at the Boilermaker 47-yard line. Ohio State in Purdue territory after a 34-yard kick. Seven the phenomenon that's puzzled me is why some people... 47 yards, 7 minutes and 5 seconds remaining in the first half. Buckeyes on top, 10 to 7. Ohio State 3 and 1 in the conference coming in. Purdue 3 and 2. Art Sleister on first down off the play face. Protected well. Going deep. Got and with a touchdown to Anderson who beats Derek Taylor. So Cedric Anderson who blocked the punt. They put Ohio State in business for the go-ahead touchdown. Goes 47 yards with a Sleister pass. And Ohio State is out in front 16 to 7. Boy, that Anderson's having some kind of a quarter, isn't he? Blocks a punt, turns around, hits the bomb. And I'll tell you, Sleister really hummed this one in there. Good protection. Watch him launch it right on the numbers. They beats Derek Taylor, number three, over his head. And there it is, the bomb. Good time for it, good field position, and a great play. Bob Atha for the extra point. And it's perfect. So Purdue, after leading 7 to nothing, now trailing by 10. Sleister is 7 out of 10 for 129 yards. And the touchdown pass here. Might amplify a bit on the Big Ten race, Sarah. Ohio State and Iowa tied coming in, 3-1 and one in the conference. They are the only two conference teams to play eight games this season. Everybody else will play nine. And Ohio State and Iowa do not face each other this year. Well, you have, uh, and that could work as a, at a disadvantage. Because if Iowa were to win all of their games, and Ohio State win all of their games, they would be one short, obviously. And Iowa would, be the, Iowa would be the winner. But honestly, everybody's been talking about these things. My position on it is that it's still a bit early, although there'll be probably three or four teams eliminated this afternoon based on the competition and the, the games that are being played. Crowd trying to get Purdue back in the game. Ohio State on top by 10. The receivers, number 21, Jimmy Smith, and number 20, Eric Jordan. 
Latha. Field goal man, extra point man, the punter, and the backup quarterback for Schleister. Ready to put it in the air. Short kick this time. Drop. Picked up by Smith after the fumble by Jordan. The 25. He almost broke it. Gets to the 30-yard line. A little bit of daylight, but it closed in a hurry. Half of the 30. First and 10. Well, you'll see the Boilermakers abandon any conservative approach now. They're going to they're behind by 10 points. They'll open it up. Buckeyes going in. One play. Sleister to Anderson. Well, the makers now from the 30-yard line on first and 10. Take to Smith. A lot of time for Campbell. Incomplete. The crowd wants a flag, uh -oh. and they do get it. Penalty Marcus calls for interference on Doug Hill, number 27. That came late, Al. Very late. But at least it came. <laughs> let's see, what, yeah, let's see what, uh, what happened on it. Just the tailback action. Go back into the pocket to throw. He has ample time. Look at the time that he has. His coolness. Picks out his receiver. Boy, that's close. Now he might have had his left hand on him there. Linfield, the intended receiver. Hill with the interference. First down, Purdue. At the 41-yard line. Four-man rush, a lot of time again, and to the 25-yard line, inside the 20 to the 15 goes Benson. You think these two quarterbacks can't hum that ball? Mm -hmm. Woo! Terrific! What a pass. Okay, we're seeing two of the greatest quarterbacks that might be in this country today. No doubt. We saw Sleister a moment ago, now we see Campbell watching right down the heart. He's got great time, delivers to Benson. Benson makes a great catch as he split the defenders right there and makes a super catch of the ball. First down at the Buckeye 14-yard line. On a roll. Campbell to Bryant. Out of bounds at the four. And a penalty marker down at the 19. That area of holding, offensive holding. That's the call against Purdue. We have the close fist, uh, Al. I didn't notice. Yeah. Here's Brian again with the quick feet, driving up the field. He's got single coverage there by number four. Kelvin Bell just turns away, but Campbell, look at the ball. Just perfect. Just enough time for Brian to keep his feet in. But it's all goes for naught. Oh, look at Jim Young. Oh, oh, listen to this. Oh, come on, Jim. Get another play. <laughs> I know how he feels. Normally mild-mannered one. Holding offense. Unless we get a couple First down. Of, we get a couple of shots of Earl over there. And listen to the intensity of this game is there. It's an important game. Important game to the conference. Important game to the two teams and the rivalry. Penalty moving it back to the 27-yard line. It's first down and 23 out of the shotgun. Campbell has some running room. Inside the 25, the 20, down to the 15-yard line. Receiver's covered, so he improvises. Delvin Bell and Doug Hill come up to make the tackle at the 15. Well, if he doesn't find any open receivers, he just takes off with the football. Second down, 11. Picked up most of the penalty yards. Back to the shotgun again. Campbell under a lot of pressure, and down he goes. Thrown down at the 32-yard line by Roland Tatum. That same defense yep. earlier. Back and first Tatum in a delayed blitz. He kind of sits in there, lets the lineman, offensive lineman, pick up the men. Watch him come from the right side of your screen into that big scene. Right there is a delayed rusher and is a sure tackler and brings him down for big negative yardage. By the way, if you're wondering, Ohio State, of course, Jack Tatum played there, and he wore 32, but they are not related. Now this uh, Roland is from Inglewood, California. Third down, 28. 
and deep and broken up in the end zone. Intended for Everett Pickens, and it was Sean Gale back there with him making the play. Well, he made a great play on it. He had a chance to intercept it, but he batted it away. Now you got to remember the entire secondary of Ohio State is three sophomores and one freshman. Kevin Bell is a freshman. Of course, they're into their eighth game now, and they've had game experience, but they started out after replacing a great secondary a sure. year ago, but they're performing well. Three of the four men back there for Ohio State last year were all Big Ten. On fourth down, 28, they'll go for it. Giving her out of field goal range at the 32-yard line. Campbell looking for Bryant, his main man, who goes into the air and makes the catch for a touchdown. Is this the Big Ten? It's amazing. <laughs> it really is. You know, the interesting thing is Bryant and Kevin Bell, here we see Bryant, are both about the same height. But it was a matter of timing here. Watch Bryant go up after this ball. Turns back over his left shoulder. Bell is in excellent position. But the timing is off. You see Bryant go up and just high enough. And Bell cannot strip the ball away. And it's a touchdown for the Boilermakers overcoming a number of penalties. Then Bell the hold. Tim Clark to the kick. And it's good. So Purdue on fourth down. Getting... 438 to go in the half. Buckeyes by three. Fans all know what I'm talking about. We're beaten by that guy right there, Steve Bryant. 15 to 14 in the same stadium, the same end of the field. He's some kind of player, I'll tell you. Mm. Kelvin is just a freshman. Kelvin Bell is just a freshman. Played the ball well, but he couldn't get it away from the number one receiver in the nation, Steve Bryant. Well, the makers kicking off, and out of bounds goes the kickoff by Walt Capiza. He'll kick it over from the 35-yard line. Well, attendance has been up in the Big Ten. Last week, every game was a sellout, and the conference, of course, has undergone a complete transformation in the past three or four years from run, run, run to pass, 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 and the fans have loved it. You know, one of the interesting things, one of the stats that certainly supports what you're saying, Al, is that... The, out of the top 11 passers in the country, four of them come from the Big Ten. Now, you know what it used to be. It used to be run, run, run. Now, certainly with all these skills, both throwing and catching, the Big Ten has certainly grabbed it. And we're seeing a demonstration of it here. Sellout crowd at Ross Age Stadium. Ohio State leading 17 to 14. Drapeza to kick off from the 35-yard line. Tim Spencer and Victor Langley back for Ohio State. Spencer from the 5 to the 10, 15, out past the 20, and tackled at the 27-yard line by Bruce King. This is the first half of our college doubleheader today. You'll see number one ranked Penn State going to the Orange Bowl, taking on the Hurricanes of Miami with quarterback Jim Kelly, coached by Howard Schnellenberger. That's coming up as the second half of our college football doubleheader today. On first down from the 27, a fumble by Gale at the 23-yard line and a pile up there. I think Ohio State got it back. The Boilermaker offensive unit has already started out onto the field. They think they have it, but no. Again, the second time. As you see, if you watch here closely, I don't know if we can get it or not. The ball comes to the ground. It's recovered there. And I want you to come out just to the left. If you can watch here, we'll see if we get it on camera. Well, we don't get it. And number 72, Joe Lukens gets the football Lukens. after it squirts out. Right. Second down, 15. He's there. Incomplete at the 28 yard line. Mark Brown. Getting a hand on it. Number 59. Nice Gale job of coverage. Receiver. Yeah, nice job of coverage because it looked like Sleister put that ball right in there. And the uh, thing that's interesting is both Spock and, or Spock and Brown, the linebackers for Purdue, are much more active than I thought that they were. They really move around, cover well. 
Schleister, 7 out of 11. And running well again with a heeled ankle. Third down, 15. At the 23. Schleister moving Williams in. And then going to Williams, who takes it at the 31 and gets out past the 40 to the 42-yard line. Well, he's, he's got some kind of arm. Robert Williams pushed him out of bounds. You see what he did? He moved, he motioned him in, he motioned Williams in so he had more uh, area to run into on the out pattern. He knew he was going to run the out pattern. Brought him in a little closer, gave him more territory to work in, and then hummed it right in there. First down, Buckeyes. From the 44-yard line, 3.39 to go in the first half. Schleser with 150 yards through the air. Spencer out to the 47. Ohio State, as you can see, with all of its timeouts remaining as the clock ticks down. Probably with the time and the field position, they may try to come up with a, good, a big play. You recall the last time they hit the home run to Cedric Anderson down that right sideline. Anderson's wide to this side this time. Just about deep for that. Williams wide to the right. Second down and six. Yep, here he goes. Schleister looking for Anderson and it's picked off at the 30-yard line by Derek Taylor. He threw it behind him. Had him open, threw the ball behind him. And Derek Taylor picked it off. Schleister hit his helmet out on the field because he knew that he had had him open. And let's take a look at it from his vantage point where he's throwing from. He's looking for Anderson again. There's the throw. And you can see the ball is overthrown. It was not behind. It was overthrown. And, of course, Taylor got it. And that was the time that Schleister hit his helmet and said, Dog gun it, I overthrew him. So Purdue getting it back at the 30-yard line. 2.59 remaining. In the first half, remember Purdue used a timeout earlier on their scoring drive to set up a third down play, so they have two remaining. Campbell stepping up and going down. At the 21-yard line, it's Jerome Foster, number 55, in for the sack. He's the best down lineman. What impressed me that time is that he just got one hand on Campbell, one hand alone, and he kept right on, hung right on and controlled him. There he is, number 55, the best down lineman. He runs about a 4.7540, and he's about 255, 60 pounds. He's a good one from Detroit, Michigan. Second down, 19. To do it to 21. Draw, Jordan. It's back out to the 29-yard line, where it'll be third down and 11. Doug Hill tripped him up. Clock running, two timeouts remaining for Purdue, and a third down, 11 upcoming. Ohio State out in front, 17-14. Comes Bryant back in. Wants a timeout. So Campbell calls Purdue second time. 30 minutes having been played, it's third down. to a first down. He may be shy. He marked it back just behind the line. He did. And he, he fell splitting the seam. You can see how angry Young is with where they have spotted the ball. Woo! It's a judgment call. Oh, you think he... <laughs> Young is standing right there. He knows exactly where the ball has to be for a first down. So you can tell, obviously, by the reaction of Young... They apparently are shy, but they have brought the change out. You think they're not and into this game? They are shy in the first down. Young standing right there on the sideline where the catch was made. Let's see whether or not the ball is splitting the line as he falls. He falls on his back after he catches the ball. And it, you see whether or not that ball, it's a tough spot. There's the ball. It's right on the line. Yes. He's got a legitimate yep. complaint. Yep. Officials moved it back a couple of inches, and that makes the difference. That makes the difference between a first down and having to kick it. 
And the point is that Jim Young was right there where he could see it. That's why he got so irritated by the call. Matt Kinzer. His third punt coming up. Garcia Lane, single safety for Ohio State. High kick, good distance. Fielded at the 15, and good coverage by Purdue, and they wrap him up at the 17-yard line. Bruce King making the tackle, a 45-yard kick. So Ohio State getting the ball back with 122 remaining in the first half, and the Buckeyes with all three timeouts remaining, and Young, of course, still steaming over where the ball was spotted. Well, if he looks in a hurry, he won't steam too much. Monday night, Minnesota against Denver at 9 Eastern time on Monday night football. Ohio State electing to stay on the ground, at least on the first play. Mark Brown and Brock Spack making the tackle on Jimmy Gale. And the Buckeyes apparently will be content to sit on a three-point advantage and go into the locker room up on top 17-14 at the half. It's been a contrast in quarters, hasn't it? Uh, although Purdue did come back and make a great play for the touchdown. On second and four. Spencer gets the first down, takes it out to the 34-yard line. The clock is stopped momentarily because of the first down with 44 seconds remaining. Dave Fry making the stop. Ohio State not calling the timeout, so they'll let the clock run down. Maybe for the last play of bomb. And home run. Priester, complete out to the 45-yard line. That's another first down. Cedric Anderson makes the catch. Tim Sennett makes the stop. 27 seconds to go. And a first down for the Buckeyes. So they have moved out to the 45, and now they will take a timeout. And try to figure out how they can at least work their way into field goal range with 27 seconds remaining in the half. See, Schleister's got uh, the kind of arm from that field position is at the 45, and the kind of speed at the wideout, both in Anderson and Williams, if he'll send them down the sideline, with uh, 27 seconds, he may run one play first and then go for the home run. It's the proper time to do it, certainly. And an interception deep down won't hurt you. Coming up next, second half of our NCAA doubleheader, number one ranked Penn State, Joe Paterno. Crew going up against the Hurricanes of Miami from the Orange Bowl. 345 Eastern time. That should be a good football game. Mm. Clemson, fourth rank, leading Wake Forest by two touchdowns in the second period. Michigan State leading the Hoosiers by 11 in the first quarter. All right. Here, Ohio State leads Purdue 17 to 14, 27 seconds remaining. First half, first and 10, Buckeyes from the 45. Three start, bobbled and incomplete. Looks like he may be going for two conservative passes to try to get him the field goal range rather than to go for the home run. Tim Spencer, the intended receiver, that eight up seven seconds. Leister now nine out of 15 for 161 yards. Second and ten. to the 47-yard line. Mike Moreland making the tackle. And the Buckeyes will now let the clock run out. So it's been a spirited first half. And now the Buckeyes decide they won't let the clock run out. You're going to call a timeout. You've got to do it right away. They let it run down to five seconds. Well, I think with the idea of maybe throwing a the home run, there's no, there's no reason not to, really. Uh... You might come up with a score. 
an interception shouldn't hurt you. Have someone there to cover it. And they've hit the bomb before. You saw Bryant in the end zone on that long fourth down, long yardage situation score the touchdown by out jumping the defender. You can see Williams is a key factor there. Numbers on the two quarterbacks, but still, the thing is, with 20 seconds, you go through a running play, then you let the clock run out another eight seconds, you're going to throw the home run. You might as well throw two of them. Oh, well, that's very true. That's very true. At least attempt a couple if you stop the clock right away. But the Buckeyes are now in a position where they have one more play. And they need all of the 53 yards to the end zone. Won't do them any good to get into field goal range because the clock will run out. Five seconds to go in the half. Well, we'll see how smart we are here. <laughs> Been a great first half. Buckeyes leading by three. Prevent defense for Purdue. Sleaster intended for Williams, but incomplete. Ball hitting the ground first, and that's the end of the first half. At halftime, Ross Age Stadium, West Los has yet to make its reappearance. Earl Bruce and his club apparently still back in the locker room. They're not even in the gateway area. You take a look at the scoring summary. Benson on the 11-yard pass. The tight end taking it in from Campbell. That made it 7 to nothing in the first quarter. That was the only scoring in the first 15 minutes. Atha with a career-best 53-yard field goal. Then Anderson from Sleister after Sleister himself had gone in for a touchdown. It was 17-7 at that point. And Steve Bryan on a play on which it was fourth down and 28. Made the great catch in the end zone. And it's 17 to 14. Ohio State could be penalized here. They're not even, right, as I say, in the gateway area. Now they're coming. 15 yards is pretty big. Here they come now. Earl Bruce will lead the Buckeyes. Back out onto the surface here at Purdue. Both teams coming in with a record of five and two overall, but more importantly in the conference, Ohio State, a mark of three and one as Campbell gets ready for the second half. And look at his numbers. Purdue with a mark of three and two, but of course Purdue can control its own destiny in the sense that they beat Ohio State here today and with a victory they would be four and two to the Buckeyes three and two and then down the line in two weeks they'll take on Iowa the other co-conference leader coming into play today. I think some of the camera shots that we've had of the coaches uh, demonstrates the intensity that's involved in this game on the part of both staffs it's a great rivalry and uh, certainly by the two teams on the field it's been well played it's been cleanly played and uh, I look forward to seeing some more big plays in the second half by both teams. Temperature in the mid-60s. Pleasant day. Breeze has picked up a bit. It is blowing as we look at the field from right to left. And Purdue in the third quarter will be going into it. As Ohio State will be kicking off to the Boilermakers. Bob Atha teeing it up at the 40-yard line. And dropping back deep for Purdue. Number 21 is Jimmy Smith. And number 20 is Eric Jordan. Buckeye 17. Purdue 14. And Ohio State set to kick off. They get the third quarter underway. Referee Jerry Hendrickson says we're ready. And here we go. It's Jordan in front of Smith from the 2 out to the 10 to the 15 and dropped at the 17-yard line by Jeff Sisko. 
Well, the makers caught at the 18-yard line with Campbell, the quarterback, Jones and Smith, the running backs, Bryant and Linville, the wide receivers. Then up front, the tight end, Benson, catching the touchdown pass in the first quarter. First down, Purdue at the 18-yard line. The Boilermakers led by the sophomore quarterback, Scott Campbell. Right to the air he goes. To the tight end, Benson, who drops it at the 24-yard line. Sean Gale covering. For Ohio State, Jerome Foster, the very fine defensive tackle. Nick Miller, the middle guard, 224-pounder. Chris Ream, the other defensive down lineman. The linebackers, Anthony Griggs, the senior. The men in the middle, outstanding. Glenn Cobb, 35, and the All-America candidate, Marcus Merrick, 36. On the outside, Mike D'Andrea out of Akron, Ohio. Second down, 10 from the 18. Campbell to Bryant out at the 30-yard line, flips the tackle. Bryant into Ohio State territory, one man to beat, and he's able to ride him out of bounds at the 27-yard line. It was Garcia Lane saving the touchdown. Bill missed the tackle right on a simple out play. You see Bryant coming down, he turns to the outside, Bell will miss him. 27, of course, is Hill, a strong safety. He goes for the interception. Dives there, misses the ball. Right there is Bell, missing the tackle. And I'm going to tell you something, Garcia Lane saves a touchdown. Watch him come into the picture and just barely gets Bryant out of bounds and down. What a play. 55 yards. Bryant has now caught five passes today, 45 on the season. And inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. For a gain of five goes Bruce King. The defensive secondary, Sean Gale, brother Jimmy, the tailback for Ohio State. Splitting time with Spencer. Kevin Bell, the corner. Doug Hill, who went for the interception and couldn't make it. And Garcia Lane, who saved the touchdown. Second down, six. At the 23. Take the Smith. Rolling left. Going for Bryant and out of bounds. Probably a good, good thing that he did that time because he got a lot of heat that time. Coming in there was both uh, Anthony Griggs and Marcus Merrick on a dog, and the coverage was there, and he threw the ball out of bounds. So it's better to have third down and six than it is certainly an interception. Early third period, Ohio State leading Purdue 17-14. Third down and six at the 22-yard line. Bryant split left, over Pickens, wide to the right. Campbell, and incomplete, and a penalty flag is thrown as the intended receiver was tripped up. Jimmy Smith, the running back, running down the sideline, was tripped up by Jeff Sisko, number 24. Take another look at it here. Sisko is in the coverage. There's man-to-man -man coverage. the call and the ball at the two-yard line first down and goal for Purdue out of the stack guy give it to Smith and back he goes to the five-yard line Marcus Merrick and Anthony Griggs leading the charge. So Smith, who started out behind some blocking, had to cave in, and the Buckeyes able to push him back a couple. I think it's impressive about both of these football teams is they can gobble up yardage in such big chunks. And of course, to get in here down near the goal line, it's always tough those last five and ten yards, but either one, Campbell or Sleister or Williams or, or certainly Bryant, can just get the big play on you. Second down goal just inside the five. Pitch it to Jordan. And he is wrapped up. Back at the eight-yard line. It's Jerome Foster, number 55, who pushed him back. So two successive three-yard losses. And for first and goal at the two, 
We go to third and goal. They're going to spot it just inside the nine. Sean Gale at the right corner spot came across the line of scrimmage, forced to play deep, and uh, was instrumental. Even though he didn't make the tackle, he was the one that forced Jordan clear to the outside. Now Campbell operates from the shotgun on third down and goal. Stepping up, under pressure, dumps it off, and incomplete. Ohio State rising to the occasion defensively. It was Nick Miller They're forcing certainly. the issue. He certainly said that right. He's mad about it. He was down in there. He wanted that touchdown badly. Now they've got to try for the field goal. You're absolutely right, Al. Ohio State rose to the occasion, occasion and had three good defensive plays. Tim Clark will now attempt a field goal at an angle from the 16-yard line. 26-yard kick to try to tie it up with 12.28 to go in the third period. Clark straight on kicker, and it's good. So Purdue settles for three as they tie it up. 12.24 to go, third period. Ohio State 17 and Purdue 17. To the boiler. Back deep for Ohio State, Tim Spencer, 46, Victor Langley, 14. George Spencer, from two yards deep, out past the 10, and dropped at the 17-yard line. David Hill making the stop. Good day for flying. Western Indiana, temperature in the mid-60s. That's how we're going to get to Chicago, Eric. <laughs> Bart Schleister, the quarterback for Ohio State. Broadmax and Gale, who alternates with Spencer. Anderson and Williams, the wide receivers. The offensive line. First down from the 18. Schleister, under some pressure, but throws to the tight end, Frank, who makes the catch at the 23. Driven out of bounds at the 24-yard line. For Purdue, you've got Matt Hernandez up front, 266-pounder. Casey Moore at 251, the junior from Youngstown, Ohio. Mike Moreland, 6'5", 223. Linebackers, Andy Gladstone played well in the first half. So did Mark Brown, number 59, out of Los Angeles. Brock Spack, perhaps their best defensive player overall. And Dave Fry. On second down and three. Leister set up the screen for Gale out past the 30 and fights forward out to the 33 yard line for a first down. Robert Williams making the stop. The secondary, Derek Taylor out of Hackensack, New Jersey. Robert Williams, who made the tackle on the last play, and the two fine safeties, Seneff, the strong safety, and McKinney, the free safety, out of Barberton, Ohio coming out firing, aren't they? I'm talking about the Buckeyes, but at the top, Schleister's come out with two passes. First down, Ohio State at the 34. Schleister to Williams at the 41-yard line. Robert Williams covering Gary on the play. Schleister with that last... Reception now, or the last completion now has 124 completions this season, breaking his own record established last season at Ohio State. He's having a great year. Mm -hmm. He audibilized that last one quick out, saw the coverage, and just took the book again. Second down three from the 41. Spencer. Fights his way out to the 45-yard line. Picks up the first down. Boston College leading Pittsburgh by three in the second quarter. Clemson rolling over Wake Forest, 49 to 14 at the half. Fifth night, Georgia, no problems with Temple Esquire. Texas has the early lead over Texas Tech. And it's Notre Dame in the second period on top of Navy, 14 to nothing. There you go. Mm -hmm. First down from the 45-yard line. Schleister for Williams. Out of bounds at the 41 of Purdue. 
Again, it's Robert Williams covering Gary on the play. Schleister methodically moving them downfield. Illinois has taken the early lead against Iowa at Champaign. Wisconsin, 14, Northwestern nothing early. Northwestern trying to avoid its 28th consecutive defeat. Michigan State leading Indiana 17-3, second quarter. First and 10 at the Purdue 41-yard line. Yale gets inside the 35, and they're picking up six, seven yards in a crack, and they'll get a few more here as a flag is thrown on the late hit by Marcus McKinney, number 34. You've got to be impressed the way Schleister's handling this football team in this drive, starting at his own 17. And of course, with this penalty, it'll get deep into... Let's see if we can see it. Sean Gale does a great job of running. Right there, he throws him down when he's got him about three or four yards. Marcus McKinney, number 34, should have turned him loose when he was out of bounds there. And that'll cost 15. And add impetus to the Ohio State drive as they have moved First the ball. First down, defense. First down. All the way down to the 19-yard line. 11-31 to play, third period. Game time, 17-17 are really keeping them off balance in the play on here. Purdue just 22 yards on the ground, the Buckeyes 76. Ohio State at the 19-yard line. Schleister. Look at this. To the five-yard line. Boy, he is right on the money. It's Gary Williams again for the catch. One-on-one -on -one coverage, I'll tell you, it's just he is tough. Williams runs an out pattern, just drives off, drives the defender deep enough, Gladstone, number 86, is trying to run back with him. But now he breaks away from him. Deep coverage on him, but it's too late. Sleister puts it right there. I mean, he has got a hot hand. First and goal. Buckeyes marching at the five of Purdue. Williams in motion. Give it to Spencer. Straight ahead. He'll take it to the one. Matt Hernandez making the tackle. It'll be second down and goal. Comes a play in Jimmy Gale, I think. Gale comes in, Spencer goes out at the tailback spot. Earl Bruce sending in the play. Gale may be calling his own number in the huddle right here. All right, see if he muscles it in or not. Second and goal. Gale. And he's in for the touchdown. Ohio State back up on top. Moving down the field and making it look rather easy. It was a great drive and uh, well executed. Mixing up the run and the pass. Sleister was right on target. The running was good. Here's the touchdown. Just dive over the pile here. Give him the ball deep enough where he can launch himself and take off. You see there he breaks the plane of the goal line. Driven back by McKinney, number 34 and of several others, but it's a touchdown for Ohio State. Bob Atha. Two for two in extra point attempts today. And three for three now. So the Buckeyes, a long drive, and do it in a hurry. 10.45 to go third period. Ohio State by seven. In the touchdown right there Jimmy Gale taking it in from the one so Ohio State on top of Purdue 24 to 17 Bob Atha kicking off for the Buckeyes with the win and he uses it to his advantage Purdue will take it at the 20 yard line not often you're going to see a nine play drive and only 99 ticks of the clock, Eric. And it was flawless. I mean, there wasn't a mistake in it. The only mistake that was made was by Purdue on that penalty by Marcus McKinney on the sideline here, which added 15 yards to that, but it was a very impressive drive on the part of the Buckeyes. Hugh Heinemann, the athletic director of Ohio State, told me yesterday, he says they they could just be a tremendous football team, but it's the little mistakes that have been costing them during the year. When they don't make the mistakes, they are just awesome. Purdue first and 10 from the 20-yard line. And a flag goes down. I think it was some movement on the part of the offensive line of Purdue. Play whistle dead. Yeah. Illegal procedure. Yep. 
Make it first down and 15 from the 15-yard line. Dead ball foul, legal procedure, offense, first down. Well, let's see whether or not Purdue can generate the kind of drive they, that led to their field goal. They hit Bryant out here for big yardage. Not an auspicious beginning. Five-yard penalty, first down, 15 from the 15. Campbell faking, a flag is thrown. Campbell scrambling and dropped at the 13-yard line with a penalty marker down at the 10. Be a holding call. That's the area that. Nicky you know. caught Claybon Fields with his arms around Nick Miller. He may refuse the penalty and take the down. Gotta make a decision now. Options being discussed right now with. See Merrick saying no. Turn it down. Holding against the offense. Declined. Second down. Take the play because the play resulted in a two-yard loss. So it's second down and 17. As the Boilermakers begin this drive with successive penalties. 10-27 to go in the third period. Eighth time Purdue has been penalized today. On a draw, it's Smith looking for some room and finds none. Getting out to only the 16-yard line where Doug Hill makes the stop. And the Irish have scored again. Lead Navy 21 to nothing. What's the mood up there in South Bend these days, Ari, as you look at other scores? Well, I think Jerry Fowle said after the ball game a week ago against Southern California, he felt the team had turned the corner. He liked what he had seen. They came very close to upsetting the uh, Trojans. And uh, it looks like what he said was true because Navy was on a three-game win streak. Third down and 14 from the 16-yard line. Campbell for right. Pickens at the 45, the 50, and into Ohio State territory. Dropped at the 47-yard line. Garcia Lane making the stop on number five, Everett Pickens, a junior from Los Angeles. Well, the writers were talking about Pickens last night. And here he jumps into the picture again. I'll tell you, they're really something. Sean Gale, the defender, fell down, and here's Pickens getting the ball, and there's Campbell putting it there. Right there, you see Gale to the left there, ball down, unable to cover, and of course, Campbell took advantage of it, threw the ball to Pickens. From third and 14 to first and 10 at the Buckeye 46-yard line. Jones wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Bobby Jones. Very second down and 10. Now they come a coaching standpoint here. When you, when you allow a team out of a hole like Ohio State had Purdue, you know, coaches go nutty with that on both sides of the line, both sides of the field, I guess, because it's a tough jam for the offensive team to get out of. And here, Ohio State's got them pinned down, going to force a punt. Next thing you know, here, Purdue is in scoring territory or in the, on their side of the ball. In the field. Second down, 10, the Buckeye 47-yard line. Campbell rolling, going for Bryant, has it at the 36, dropped it to 35, and it's a first down. It should be anyway. Let's see where they spot it. And it will be. First down. Same thing. They come to Bryant again on the rollout to the right. Bryant comes up the field, just turns away from the defender. He's giving him a lot of air here. Now watch Bryant, how he gets down and lets the man hit him and spin off of it. It's the same spin that he freed himself in off the last pass that he caught coming down the same sideline. First down, Purdue at the Buckeye 35-yard line. Campbell now 14 out of 22 for 280 yards. Tries to add to those figures. Moving to his right, under pressure, can't escape. Dropped to the 39-yard line. Sean Gale coming up to make the play. He had a great fake on the play. Everybody thought that he had given the ball to the running back and he was trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Bryant. Wasn't open, so he elected to keep the ball, try to run it, and at least come up with second down. And they lost a few yards on the play, but at least they have the ball. And still risking putting pressure on Ohio State. Lost three, second down, 13 at the Buckeye 39-yard line. Campbell with time, over the middle, wide open. 
Griffin is Smith, who takes it to the 30. About four yards shy of the first down. Third down play upcoming. Anthony Griggs, 48. American Con made the stop. He's making the stop. Has he got close to 30, 300 yards now, and we're only uh, half, half the period gone in uh, third period. And Campbell has much, half close to 300 yards now. Right. On a 400-yard pace, we have half the third period to go. Wow. Purdue's remaining schedule played in their own hands. Third down, three. and Ben Lee, Lee number 86, figuring in his first tackle of the day, and it's a big one. Boy, that is a big play. Foster will come from the left of your screen, along with Lee. Here you see Campbell trying to scramble out. There's 55, and Lee right there, no chance. Big negative yarding. Back to the 44, taking them out of possible field goal range, and setting up the punt, Matt Kinzer to boot it into the breeze. Garcia Lane back for Ohio State. Buckeyes with 10 men up on the line. And they set up the return. Lane will let it go after signaling for the fair catch and it goes into the end zone for the touchback. Buckeyes will take over at the 20. 6.24 to go third period. Buckeyes 24, Boilermaker 17. First and ten from the 20-yard line. Sleester off the quick count, gives it to Spencer. Spins out to the 25-yard line. Second and five is Roosevelt Barnes, a fine basketball player for four years here at Purdue and trying his hand at football and doing very well. Number 42, the linebacker, makes the tackle. First uh, year that he's played football in five seasons. Mark Sleester. 213 yards through the air. Campbell is nearing the 300-yard figure. Over 500 yards total between the two clubs through the air today. Second down, four and a half. Rodnax, the big fullback, takes it out to the 28-yard line where Mark Brown makes the tackle. I think this is a big series of downs for Purdue. I think they've got to stop Ohio State on this series. Because they've had difficulty in this second half. Because that Ohio State just absolutely walked down the field in their first drive. And of course, from a psychological and morale standpoint, this is a big play right here. Ohio State scoring drive to begin the second half. Nine plays. Fleester was five out of five on the drive. He stayed on the ground thus far here. It's third down at two. And Spencer is bottled up. Purdue does come up with the play. They needed that. So the Boilermakers will be getting the ball back. Buckeyes to punt. Clock running. 4.45 remaining. Third period. Bob Etha punting for the Buckeyes. Scott Craig dropping back as the single safety. Only Etha's second punt of the day. First. 46 yarder and of course it was able to kick a 53 yard field goal to do 10 men on the line and ready to rush in but instead they peel off trying to set up the return break from the 35 to the 40 and after the 43 yard line so decent field position for Purdue after a 37 yard punt by Asa the crowd get the offense Ready for its task here with 413 to play in the third period. Sold out at Ross Age Stadium. Scott Campbell at the helm all the way thus far for Purdue. 15 out of 23 for 290 yards and two touchdowns. First and 10 from the boy to make a 43. To the tight end Benson. To the Ohio State 42 yard line. Marcus Merrick making the tackle. What really has to be impressive about Campbell, the fact he's just 19, a sophomore, but remarkable poise in addition really to the does. obvious physical skills. He really does. The same pass play that they've run with Benson crossing underneath. Number 81 there hits his tight end. 
He's hit a, hits a variety of receivers, finds the open guy, and delivers. First down of the 42. Campbell tries to set up the screen, and it's intercepted at the 44-yard line. Ohio State gets the turnover on the interception by Spencer Nelms. The backup middle guard, number 54, just a freshman out of Decatur, Georgia. Great reactions on his part. Let's see what happens. Campbell's trying to deliver the ball. He's trying to throw a little underneath pattern right here to Benson again, number 81. But it's deflected, and Nelms comes up with the football, a big interception. The freshman reserve middle guard gives Ohio State the ball back, and Schleister goes right to the air, incomplete. The intended receiver was Anderson, who fell down, tried to get back up, and almost made a whale of a catch. There is Nelms, made his way north from Decatur, Georgia, to Columbus. Freshman, 6'3", 236. Pretty good size fellow in there. Got his first interception. That last play that uh, Schleister threw was a beautiful time play. Anderson actually was still facing downfield when Schleister let it go, but as he cut, well, he slipped and fell. Anderson did. Second down, 10. Anderson in motion. Schleister under a lot of pressure and throws it away. Third down. Marcus McKinney on the safety blitz came flying through along with Dave Fry, the outside backer, number 60. They're trying to set up a little screen off to the short side of the field, but the pressure was set, the timing was off, and it just didn't materialize. Third and 10, Buckeyes from the 45-yard line. 3.41 remaining. We're in the third quarter. Ohio State on top, 24-17. to Williams and Anderson both split to the right this time. And the tight end, Frank, comes out wide to the left. Schleister throws over the middle and incomplete. Knocked down by Robert Williams, number 36. He made a great play right there. Number 36 coming off the field. Looked like the ball was right there. He just dove the last second and knocked the ball down before it could be a reception. Take a look at it here. This is Gary Williams, number 44. And watch Robert Williams dive out here and just get his hand on the ball. Terrific play. Eighth at a punt. Scott Craig, single safety for Purdue. Low line drive kick. Craig lets it go. And it's a touchback. So out to the 20 it comes with that much time remaining. Ohio State was leading at the half by three. Lisa led them downfield. Early here in the second half, after Purdue had tied the game, another score is underway in Alabama, where Mississippi has the early lead, 7 to nothing. Mississippi State, Kansas, leading Nebraska. Early first period. Iowa State, Kent Frank, a touchdown over Kansas State in the first period. First and 10 from the 20. Smith to the 22. The ground game for Purdue today has been basically non-existent. There's been a lot of negative yardage. A lot of tackles for losses and consequently Purdue with only six yards net at the moment. They've not been able to establish the running game and of course they have fallen behind and started to have to get to the air to catch back up again. After leading they fell behind 17-7 to caught up but then they've fallen behind again. Second and seven from the 23. Campbell on the option, pitching to Smith, turns the corner, 25-30, and out to the 32-yard line for a first down. Garcia Lane making the stop. That's the one play that they have been able to execute. Wally Jones, the fullback, made a great block on it. They, they ran that play earlier from almost the same position, and they were very successful with it, remember, in the first half. And that's the only two options we've seen him run. And both times it gained yardage. Ryan wide left, Pickens. Split to the right. Campbell. Going deep. 
the Benson to the 40, inside the 30, to the 20 yard line. The tight end has been a key man today, number 81, Cliff Benson, a 49 yard pass and run. I'm about to do the through it too, boy. I'll tell you, Greg Campbell is something. He rolls away, actually reverse pivots, and comes back and takes to the eye back, number 21 Smith, then looks back for Benson. Benson ran an out and then broke to the inside of the defender right there, and look at that ball right there in his hand. A great catch. You can't say too much about either one of these teams. Lamar Keekler made the stop, so it's first and 10 at the 19-yard line with two minutes and 32 seconds. Remaining in the third period, time had been called. The chains were set up in the wrong position. They were set up as if Ohio State had the ball. So the <laughs> officials had to move the chain gang down 10 more yards. Uh, they're on that side of the sideline. Maybe they were influenced a little. Here comes that option again. The option again. Picks it to Smith. Not this He's in trouble. Out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Not well executed that time. Now they, what they did, they deployed properly and they got the secondary coverage to come up and support and they could not get the leverage at the corner. Good defense. 568 yards between the two men today. That's just unbelievable. I mean, you're seeing real talent. These guys are good. Second and 12. Going in Bryant's direction. Incomplete. Bryant running out to Aaron Merrick, putting pressure on Campbell that time, along with Anthony Griggs. Well, they did, and it's tough to throw when you're going to your left, and he was kind of off balance. Just couldn't get himself in position to throw the ball. Say one thing about Ohio State, Al, when they need to, they rise to the occasion. Here's Merrick here. You see him blitz from the deep linebacker spot. Smith, number 21, tries to pick him up, but he's unsuccessful. Third down, 12 from the 21 out of the shotgun. Campbell hit as he gets rid of the ball and incomplete intended for Pickens. The pressure that time applied by Ben Lee. He did. He put the pressure on and made the big difference because Campbell had no balance to be able to deliver the ball properly. So the Boilermakers bogged down, and the field goal unit comes in with Tim Clark to attempt a 38-yard field goal. It will be spotted at the 28-yard line. Clark, we mentioned before, half his right foot amputated when he was 18 months old. That special shoe, a la Tom Dempsey a few years back. Long enough and good. with his second field goal of the day. Two minutes and four seconds remaining in the third quarter. Ohio State 24, Purdue 20. Let's check in with Jim Lampley in New York. 2.04 remaining in the third period. Ohio State 24, Purdue 20. And the Boilermakers to kick off. The circular structure, by the way, that you saw on the last shot, the Mackey Arena, home of Purdue's basketball teams. Lovely campus. Yeah, we were watching them play basketball or practice. They were practicing yesterday afternoon. It's a lovely arena. West Lafayette, the banks of the Wabash. Chris Schenkel's alma mater. Oh, that, that's right. This is where Chris went to school. And there it is, the thing that Dan was talking about, Mackey Arena. Got some pretty good basketball teams over the years here. Sure has. Joe Barry Carroll. And that rivalry with Indiana is something, I'll tell you. Walter Pisa. Spencer fielding at the eight-yard line. 15, 20. And Tim gets out to the 25. First and 10 for the Buckeyes. Field goal kicker Tim Clark who took over for Rick Anderson early in the season. Anderson had been heralded, had some problems early on. Clark has done a great job. Hasn't missed an extra point this season. 
just two field goals today. Ohio State with the ball. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Spencer. It's about three. Matt Hernandez and Brock Spack making the tackle. Brian Brown. Yeah, problem. Of course, they haven't, they haven't dominated the game, certainly uh, running. Ohio State hasn't. And it's been the throwing arm of Schleister. And you think that he'll go to the air here. Second and seven. Ball at the 28-yard line. Over the middle for Williams. To the 40. And out to the 48-yard line. Bob Lashley, number 39, making the tackle. Gary Williams. That's where you run into a problem on this thing. They had substitution problems or people running on the field. They weren't set. Williams crosses clear from his right to his left. And you see here he makes the catch. Took Cooper, number 18, was the guy that was covering. Actually, what happened, though, there was they had people running on the field. They weren't set defensively. First down, Buckeyes from the 49-yard line. It's Gale into Purdue territory, tackled at the 47 by Brock Spack. By the way, Gary Williams today, he's the man who won a big hole, Doug Donnelly, after his great career, graduating following the 1980 season. Williams has caught seven passes, there he is, for 126 yards. Of course, even when Donnelly was there, Williams was a key man in their passing attack. And he's uh, got 4.45 speed, he can go. Second down, six from the 47-yard line. Short drop, looks for Williams and overthrows him. Well, he had plenty. That was just, he just audibleized that the line was just going to take the quick out, and uh, Art just, Art Sleister just overthrew the pass. He had him. See all these substitutions. Uh, uh, Purdue does a lot of substituting down and distance, back and forth in that play where Williams did catch the pass, and they had a good size of the unit. Now there goes Hernandez in, and now he comes back out again. Third and six. At the boy to make her 47. Schleister. After audibleizing. Spencer. All the way down to the 22-yard line. Read that defense perfectly. Changed the play at the line and called the right one. They sure did. Exactly what they did. They saw what was going to happen here. Here's McKinney, number 34, dogging, red dogging, going for Schleister. He doesn't have the ball. And, of course, Gale goes right down the field. Oh, was that Spencer? Spencer, Spencer goes right down. Spencer's going off there. Spencer carried beautifully through that line. Spencer's picked up 79 yards today. Now it's Gale. He comes in and plays at Spencer, dropped at the 22-yard line, and what will be the final play of the third period, Mark Brown making the stop so the clock running down and we'll have 15 minutes to go at west lafayette indiana at the end of three it's ohio state 24 purdue 20 we'll be back in
sets up some of the passes. Don't count this Purdue team out. As Jimmy Young said yesterday, he says, you know, this team I like. He says, they'll fight you. They've come back before uh, in ball games. They come from behind to win. And so with 14.45 left to go, I mean, I don't think the Buckeye fans can breathe too easily yet. Eighth it, kicking off for the Buckeyes. Back deep for Purdue. Jimmy Smith. Eric Jordan. In the direction of Smith. And then picked up by a short man at the eight-yard line and taken back out to the 16 is Jeff Fuller. Who returns the kick. And it's a first down for Purdue at the 16-yard line. Buckeyes, boy, it hasn't taken them long today. Earlier, they had a nine-play drive that consumed only 139. And here they go, nine plays, 75 yards, which is 219. They're explosive, and they're getting the act together at the right time of the year. I think it was uh, Earl Bruce that said it's November time, and that's the key time. And he's counting October 31 as November time. First down from the 16-yard line. Smith loses the ball, and the Buckeyes have it at the 23-yard line. Whoa! The last thing that Jim Young needed right now. The very last. Mike D'Andrea recovering the fumble for the Buckeyes. There he is, number 96, the senior out of Akron, Ohio. That's a little trap inside. It's a little tackle trap. The right tackle pulls and pulls across the face of the center of the ball. Well, just as he hits the ground with his right elbow, as it hits the ground, it pops out. Merrick made the contact on him. Ohio State first and 10 at the Purdue 23. Going right for the end zone for Anderson. Touchdown. Anderson with his second scoring catch of the day, beating Derek Taylor. You just had the feeling Ohio State would come right back after regaining possession of the ball, go right for the end zone. That's exactly what Feaster did. And it's 37 to 20. It was actually the same play, same situation they had in the first half when he had. Taylor, only a shorter pass, but here he is, Leister again. He's broken every record in the book at Ohio State and just adding on to it, and here he is throwing to Cedric Anderson before Taylor can get there, number three, and bango, another touchdown for the Buckeyes, and that turnover has been very costly to the Boilermakers. Eighth up. And it comes Axel, and it's 38 to 20. So we played only... 28 seconds of the fourth period. The Buckeyes have scored two touchdowns and lead by 18. Halloween beginning to turn into a nightmare for Purdue as they came into the fourth period, trailing by only four. Now, all of a sudden, they trail by 18 as Ohio State has scored twice in the first 28 seconds of the fourth quarter. Lead it 38 to 20, and eighth to kick it away. Field it up at the 15-yard line. out to the 28, Tom Barr, reserve tight end. Bringing it back. Update you. Panthers after trailing early, now leading Boston College by 10 at the half. Clemson in a route. Georgia in a route. First down, Purdue. From the 28. Campbell, going to keep, hit from behind and dropped at the 33-yard line by Chris Green. Texas leading Texas Tech by 14 in the second. Still 7-3 Mississippi State, first quarter. Kansas maintaining its advantage over Nebraska. Second quarter. Yep. Iowa State 7, Kansas State nothing. Notre Dame rolling at the half. And Illinois leads Iowa 17 to nothing in the second quarter of Champaign. Second down and six. Bruce King, a fullback, out to the 35-yard line. 
out, of course, with its team down by 18. Didn't like that call at all. Beat goes on at Northwestern. Will they ever win? 31 to nothing, Wisconsin. Michigan leading Minnesota in the second period. Third down, four. Defension. Headed to 39, and I think his forward progress should give him the first down. Crowd is all over the official for the spot. As he puts it down to the 39, I think it's still enough for the first down. We'll see it is. Yeah. Mike D'Andrea made the last hit. There it is again. Campbell going back into the pocket to throw. Hits Benson crossing. He's crossed the line, and he falls backwards. Comes down right at the mark that they placed it, but it was very close. And I think Jim Young was ready to scream a little bit. First and 10 from the 39. Campbell going for the home run. Bryant falls down, did a good acting job, gets no fall. Lamar Keepler was covering on the play. Crowd wants interference, but the official is correct in not granting it. Well, went for the big one that time, but Bryant was well covered. Here's a look at Bryant number one. The thing about it is Ohio State. Here he is coming down the field, and he runs into, I believe it's uh, Keller? Keekler. Keekler, yes, number eight. Second down, 10 from the 39-yard line. Campbell for Jones, incomplete. Jones getting ripped at the 39-yard line by DeAndrea again. Well, Ohio State's willing to give some short stuff, but they're not going to give anything deep. Protect, protect that lead, make them go the long, hard way. You see that uh, Jim Young now has just sent in a play with Bryant. And see whether or not they go for the first down or try to get a bigger piece of yardage. Third down, 10 from the 39. 12-35 to go in the game. Ohio State leading 38-20. to 20. Campbell for Bryant, finds him at the 45-yard line, still on his feet, and dropped at the 44. <laughs> it's something, isn't it? <laughs> Doug Hill finally making the stop. They've got a beauty, though, and Steve Bryant having some day. And Mr. Cool staying right in that pocket until Bryant came open as he was crossing the middle. Found him. As we take a look at it from here, watch how cool Campbell is here. He waits, 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 finally finds Bryant. Bang right there where it's supposed to be. Look at that beautiful lead pass on a crossing receiver. And Bryant is a great runner. Shakes a couple of tackles and comes back again. Back live on first and 10. Campbell gets sacked back at the Purdue 45-yard line. Pass that Bryant caught, by the way, the seventh he has caught today. Good for 150 yards. Ohio State came up with a big play again when it was needed. Their defense has risen to the occasion. Loss of 11, second down and 21. Campbell with time, looking for Benson, overthrows him at the 30 yard line. Scott Campbell, uh, 19 out of 33 for 376 yards. One thing about Ohio State, they've been giving up a lot of yardage through the year. Tony Easton had a great day statistically for Illinois against Ohio State. Yet when you look at the scoreboard at the end of the game, it's OSU on top. Well, that's true. They've given a lot of yardage. But they have, in this game, they're given a lot of yardage. But they come up with a big play at the right time. It just seems like they rise to the occasion. Third and 21. Campbell trying to find Bryant and does. He gets to the 34-yard line and very close to the first down. Marcus Merrick making the stop. And Bryant shaking up on the play. Bryant coming in today. Tied for the lead nationally in receptions with 40, making his eighth catch of the afternoon. Well, I'll tell you, this combination of Campbell and Bryant just turns inside behind his Merrick, 36. See what happens here. He might have gotten a knee there. 
So Bryant shaken up. Time out on the field with 11.09 remaining in the game. Ohio State 38 and Purdue 20. It got up and went off the field unaided just as we went into that commercial. So he's all right. Let's First and 10 for Purdue at the Ohio State 34-yard line. On the delay, it's Jordan who has some room and gets to the 25-yard line. Eric Jordan picking up close to nine. Under 11 minutes remaining. Buckeyes led by three at the half. Two quick touchdowns early in the fourth quarter. On top by 18. Second down and one. Campbell wide open is Jones for the first down. And he gets to the 18-yard line. Tackled there by Doug Hill. So that pass now, Scott Campbell up and over the 400-yard mark on the day. Al, you remember what Jim Young said yesterday? If they have to pass the ball over 30 times, they lose. Yeah, he said uh, 20 to 30. Yeah, the goal, yep. Unless. And it's unless right now. Right. Complete to the 18-yard line to Jordan again, but he loses a yard. It'll be second down and 11. Meanwhile, let's check in with Jim Lampley in New York. Bonus coverage in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. At the end of a 49-yard drive, quarterback Alan Gray gives the ball to fullback Ken Simon, number 20. Simon fumbles, trying to go over the top into the end zone. Halfback Joe Carter alertly recovered the fumble, however. Alabama now leads 10-7 in the second quarter. Al? All right, Jim, second down and nine for Purdue at the 18-yard line as Campbell throws for Bryant. Makes the catch at the seven, eludes a tackle, goes in for the touchdown. <laughs> Steve Bryant, shaken up after his last reception, spent one play on the sidelines, and back he comes, and one official signal touchdown, but now he has been overruled, as they say he was out of bounds at the one. One official went up with the arms to say touchdown, but was overruled. That's right, here's Bryant, comes down. Running that out pattern, and Campbell puts it there. Now watch him shake the tackler. Garcia Lane tries to make the play right there, spins to the inside like he has been. Let's see if he steps out. Yes, yes he does. Yes, he was out. But here he is, the official <laughs> yeah. touchdown. Not that time. First and goal from the one. Second man through is the fullback, Bruce King, who gets stacked up. And they're running valuable time off that clock to try to unpile in a hurry and get back and run a play and get the ball in the end zone if they expect to make this a game. They're still behind by 18 points. Absolutely. Clock running with 9.22 right. remaining in the fourth quarter. Second down goal. Out of the stack die. Give it to Jones and he's in. Wally Jones gets it across for the touchdown behind Benson and Gillespie. He paved the way for him. So the Boilermakers, with nine minutes and ten seconds remaining in the game, make it 38 to 26 with the extra point attempt upcoming. They just muscled it off tackle with two fullback lead blockers. Of course, they get it into the into the end zone, and this game is not over with. Purdue will apparently go for two. 38 to 26. And Jim Young down by 12. Nothing for the two-point conversion as Campbell seeks it out of the shotgun formation. Bryant goes in motion. Campbell looks Bryant's way, then has to look the other way, and then down he goes at the 15. So they're unsuccessful there in an attempt to pair the lead to 10. They still trail by 12 with 9 minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the game. The Buckeyes of Ohio State leading the Boilermakers of Purdue 38-26, to 9-10 remaining. Purdue coming off its scoring drive, kicking off Walter Pisa. 
to move it away, and the Buckeyes expecting the onside kick. Nine men up near the 50-yard line, but they don't get it. Spencer backing up, and he'll down to the end zone. Crowd booing, feeling that Spencer actually made the catch in front of the goal line and then step back in with well, the official right there. Well, what it is, he did catch the ball at the one-yard line, but the momentum of the ball carried him into the end zone, and possession was not ruled until he was in the end zone. Absolutely the perfect call. First down, Ohio State. Now you would figure the Buckeyes would try to use as much of the clock as they possibly can. Right. But they still, I think they've got to make a couple of first downs, and then they have to go to the air to do it. Because it's 9 10 on that clock. A lot of time left. First down from the 20. Start on the ground with Spencer. Out to the seven yard line. It's exactly the type of play you want to see on first down in a situation like this. Set yourself up with a second down and three. Keep turning out those first downs if you can and eat up the clock. Good first down play. Excellent. Good yardage on it. Now the pressure is on Purdue rather than on Ohio State. Second down, three from the 27. Again, it's Spencer. This time he is stacked up at the 28-yard line. It'll be third down, a little less than two upcoming. I think the down is important enough that uh, the Boilermakers should consider going into a goal line type of defense to shut it down. Pos possession of the ball is so important. Coming up next from the Orange Bowl in Miami, number one ranked Penn State against the Hurricanes. The second half of our NCAA doubleheader. Spencer has now carried 20 times for 89 yards. Third down, a yard and a half. And the Boilermakers jumping around with a flag going down. I think Roberts, number 70, moved. Picked up his hand. Yep. That's the case. Number 70, Bill Roberts. Out of Miami, Florida. Sophomore. And incidentally, played a whale of a ball game last week. We watched him. Dead ball foul, legal procedure against Ohio. Watched him in the film yesterday against Indiana, and he caught my eye. That guy played a whale of a football game. Good blocker, good quick feet. Good job. Third down. Seven now. From the 23. Schleister. Scrambling out of the pocket. And out of bounds at the 19. A big play by Roosevelt Farm. The basketball player. Number 42. Matt Hernandez is the man who initially thrust him out of the pocket, but it's Barnes who wraps him up. Not bad for a basketball player, huh? All right, 42. He makes a great play. A guy hasn't played football for about five years, played basketball. Hernandez will come in, number 71, flush him out to the right. Watch Barnes, 42, come up to support, gets one hand on him, gets two, throws him out of bounds, and they're forced to punt. And look what the block is on. Ace there to kick it away. Is in trouble and Purdue's going to get it deep in Ohio State territory. Jim DeLeon with a high snap. Just before Asa was ready to receive the snap, it looked like he was asking for time. There was so much noise in the closed end of this stadium, he was disconcerted. Then the high snap, and Purdue gets it. Remember what Tom Shute told us yesterday as we walked across the field? It's a high snap, way high snap, but this is at the end of the Purdue side. And the recovery is made by, it didn't make any difference because it was forced down. But Tom Shute, SID, told us yesterday that this crowd noise, shooting noise, really affects the opposition. But look at them quiet down for Purdue. First and goal from the eight-yard line. Campbell. Throwing incomplete. Three receivers in the area. It was Jordan, I believe, the man he was looking for with Brian and Benson, also within about six or seven yards of Jordan. Marcus Merrick put the pressure on Campbell that time. Second down and goal. Campbell is limping. 
Hybel who has gone all the way. You can see hobbling back to the huddle. But staying in. Ryan to the slot to the left. can make the hit. Touchdown, Purdue. Another angle here from the back, from the shotgun. Look at him lead the pass. He was a little bit behind him, and Bryant got a pretty good shot there, too, as you see. What a day. Bryant with a second touchdown catch. Tim Clark to attempt the extra point. The kick is good. Campbell is now passed for 400 and 30 yards today. 7 12 to go in the game. It's Ohio State 38 to 33. State has seen an 18 point lead become just a 5 point margin with 7 12. A lot of time left. Both teams with all three timeouts remaining. Campbell, 430 yards through the air today for Purdue. The school record set by Mark Herman last year against Iowa. 439 yards. These talents certainly haven't dis disappointed us, have they? Mm. Walter Pisa to kick off for Purdue. Spencer and Langley back deep. Booming kick with the breeze, and Ohio State will start from the 20 yard line. The Boilermakers and the Buckeyes. It's been a wild one from start to finish. Pace has been hectic. Ball in the air all day long. And the skills have been just outstanding on both sides. And here it is. It gets right down to seven minutes and 12 seconds left to go. And this is when Ohio State needs to grind out a couple first downs. Craig Dunn, number 42, in his fullback. Spencer is the tailback. Fleester trying to audibleize. And it's Spencer for a gain of three. Spencer out to the 23. Second down and seven. We want to welcome those of you watching our other first half regional action today to West Lafayette, Indiana. Al Michaels and Ara Parsiki in the score 38-33 Ohio State. The Buckeyes have the ball second down, seven, at their own 23-yard line. Clock running with six minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the game. Broadback, back in at fullback. Fleischer, the throw, in and out of the hands of John Frank, the tight end. It'll be third down. Mark Brown covering on the play. Oh, that was a big drop by Frank that time. Very crucial play because it would have been a first down. It's been able to get out in better field position. First down and also take some more time off that clock and protect the lead that they have, which is only five points. Third down and seven. Critical call. Gleaser, 17 out of 30 for 277 yards. Campbell, as you can see, 430 yards through the air. 37. Leister has a man wide open at the 50-yard line, and he drops it. Bad Jemison. Jemison had beaten Cliff Cooper. He was all alone. Can't hang on, and Purdue's going to get the ball back. Unbelievable. Two passes dropped wide open. Watch Leister here. Jemison runs right by Cooper, number 18. He's wide open, and Leister sees it, drops it right in his hands. How can you drop a ball like that? Pressure of a ball game, I guess. Bob Ace at a punt. Scott Craig, single safety. Purdue with 10 men up. Ohio State is saying, we can't hear the signals. They got a discretionary timeout. 
And the Purdue fans will have to be careful because it could get a five-yard penalty. And the announcement to that effect being made by the public address announcer. Remember, they're in a closed end of the stadium. And Tom Shute, the SID, told us that that was a problem here, that the student body is entirely the uh, closed end of the stadium. Crescendo builds again. kick a wobbly live drive kick in an angle but it takes a good Ohio State bounce and all the way down to the 30 yard line for a 47 yard kick by Asa. For those of you who have not been with us throughout the day we have witnessed a remarkable performance by both quarterbacks. Scott Campbell just a sophomore out of Hershey, Pennsylvania filling the shoes of Mark Herman, who graduated following the 1980 season, and he is nine yards shy of eclipsing Herman's single-game school passing mark. Will he get it here on first and ten? Campbell, out to the 43-yard line. The number 14, Joe Linville. And there's your record, a 13-yard pickup. Unbelievable. Linville and Carmel, Indiana, turns back to the inside, comes back for the ball like a smart receiver should rather than staying backward where the defenders were and of course Campbell hits him as he has hit many others in this ball game what a football game first and 10 Purdue at the 43 555 remaining in the game Campbell to the 46 yard line to Cliff Benson the tight end who's had Several key receptions today, and they're into Buckeye territory. Another first down. Got a magnet on that ball of some kind. Again, Campbell, this time picking out Benson and hits him right here. Great catch. It's a little bit high, but he brings it down. Cliff Benson brings it down as he has several others this afternoon. First and ten, Purdue at the Buckeye 46. Clock running, 5.30 remaining. Going deep and nearly picked off. The intended receiver was Eric Jordan, and it was Garcia Lane back covering. Leaping high. Well, Garcia Lane thought it might have had a chance to intercept this ball. Watch him jump right here. Garcia Lane, number 12, right there. But he was knocked down there by Jordan, and of course he kept it from being an interception. Second down, 10, at the 46-yard line. Plenty of time for both teams. 5.24 left to go. Campbell, after audibleizing, a quick out complete to the 36-yard line to Linville. He saw soft coverage there on Garcia Lane and just took the quick out right here. Garcia Lane's playing and giving him a lot of cushion. He throws the ball high, but Linville comes down with it. 14 now. And just enough for the first down as they lined it up with the chain. the Dartmouth-Yale game, or we have watched that game. Welcome to West Lafayette, Indiana, where we have five minutes and eight seconds remaining in the game. Ohio State leading Purdue by five, but Purdue has it at the Buckeye 36-yard line. First and ten, Scott Campbell, the sophomore quarterback, protected well, throwing for Benson, overthrows him at the ten. Marcus Merrick, the linebacker, dropping back to cover. Merrick has to be tired, number 36 there. Captain, outstanding linebacker and leading tackler. He's been all over the field, both tackling and covering. There he is, chasing down the field, trying to cover Benson, number 81. And was there. Second down and 10. Ohio State looks tired defensively. They've been on the field a lot this second half. Early in the quarter, they led by 18. On a delay, it's Jordan, but that didn't fool anybody. Drop for a loss back at the 38. Nick Miller, number 99, reading it. And dropping it back at the 38-yard line. We're going to be third down, 12. Earl Bruce. The Ohio State head coach. Jim Young of Purdue. Those of you who have watched Drake and Tulsa, we welcome you to West Lafayette, Indiana. Ohio State leading Purdue 38-33. 
Purdue out of the shotgun on third down and 12. Campbell for Linville. Can't make the play. Tried to one-hand it at the 20-yard line. So it'll be fourth down upcoming with four minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the game. It's just a little bit of a lead, just a little bit too much of a lead by Campbell. One of the few occasions that he hasn't been on the target. Big play now. I tell you, I'd be sweating on both sides. Think about Earl Bruce over there protecting the five-point lead against Campbell. And Jimmy Young on this side of the field saying, hey, we've got to have it here. It's still 4 14 though. They can get the ball back, but it's a big play. Fourth down and 12. If they don't make the first down, they might be forced to use their timeouts defensively. Campbell nearly intercepted and incomplete. One receiver, Eric Jordan, fell down. Also in the area was Everett Pickens. So Ohio State gets it back on down. Sean Gale was covering on the play. 4.09 remaining in the game. And Ohio State gets the ball back at the 38, leading Purdue 38 to 33. Buckeye at Miami from the Orange Bowl. Art Schuster on first and 10. Giving off to Spencer to the 42-yard line. Pick up a four. Fox ticking down under four minutes to play. Schleister Matt Hernandez made the stop. Schleister went all the way over the sideline to Earl Bruce to get the play and then came back. Didn't use the substitute. Probably wanted to make sure there was no communication problem. Now he's back in here with the play. Second down, six. From the 42-yard line. Out of the eye to split backs on second and six. Down the line, Austin by Schleister. He gets buried back at the 38-yard line. Brock back and Roosevelt Barnes converge. There's a great linebacker of the Boilermakers, number 58, Spack. Goes right through everyone and gets in on the play along with Barnes, number 42. Great defense on the option play. They had trouble stopping that earlier. Put the ball down at the 40-yard line now. Third down. Nine. Fleischer trying to be heard above the crowd. On third and nine. Going for Anderson. What a catch at the 31-yard line. Derek Taylor was covering on the play, but credit that one to Anderson all the way. Remarkable catch. A remarkable throw under the pressure and circum circumstances. Woo! What a play. He audibilized this at the line. Came back and just launched it right now because he was under pressure there by Barnes, 42. And Anderson makes a great move here on Derek Table, number three, gets to the outside and makes a one-handed catch. Tremendous concentration coming in right over the helmet. 18 out of 32 is Schleister for 307 yards. That play covered 30. First down at the Purdue 30-yard line. Stay on the ground with Gale, who's bunched up at the line of scrimmage. But right now, Ohio time call. Ohio State, second down, nine. A reminder, Penn State, Miami coming right up following this one. Second and nine from the 29-yard line. Schleister has Frank open at the five, and he's... The Ohio State Buckeyes with Anderson making a great catch on a third down play and then Frank getting open at the five and taking it in for the touchdown. <laughs> Talk about pressure play. The big one was the one that Schleister hit Anderson on. Here he comes right back, split the defense. They were in the 2D defense. Watching come back. Turns and right down the middle. Absolutely perfect to John Frank, number 89. And in two or three plays, they're in the end zone under a tremendous pressure situation. Ohio State up by 11. As Etha attempts the extra point on a Tom Jacks hold. And the kick is good. So two minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the game. Purdue had to use one timeout defensively, so they have only two remaining. They'll face Minnesota on the road, Northwestern in Columbus, then wrap up the season at Ann Arbor on the 21st of November. I think the first score that we saw earlier was Minnesota was behind Michigan 10 to nothing, I believe. Second quarter score, I think. Apparently, they will keep the official time. 
on the field. Should read 219 at this point. Hello, that scoring blew the clock away, I guess. Eight to kicking off. Smith from the goal line to the 10. And he comes out to the 22-yard line. First and 10 for Dew, and no doubt going to the air and probably out of the shotgun. Now we'll see more balls in the air here with Campbell and just increase probably the record that he's already achieved in, in the passing statistics. Campbell, by the way, out of Hershey, Pennsylvania, when it came down to it, he had to choose between Purdue and Penn State. And chose Purdue because of the emphasis here that has been placed on the quarterbacks over the years, more so than at Penn State. Look at those numbers. 400 and so he's got a chance to wind up over 500 yards because you know he's going to put it up here as long as they have the ball. 464 this far. First and 10. A few more yards here to Benson. He's trying to get out of bounds. And Ohio State trying to keep him inbound. And at the 32-yard line, he's out of bounds. Game was tied. Ohio State went ahead by seven. Stretched their advantage all the way up to 18 early in the fourth period. They will go for the first down on the ground as it's Jordan carrying that to the 45-yard line. So first and 10. Purdue will not want to waste a timeout here. They get the clock stopped on the first down momentarily. Right, come, come right out into the shotgun. The clock is running again. Two timeouts remaining for the Boilermakers. On first and ten. It's Bryant who can't make the catch at the 40-yard line. Pass a little low. Steve unable to hold on. Might have hurt himself a little bit. His shoulder. Campbell nearly picked off and then caught at the 37-yard line by Linville. Nearly intercepted by Cobb. <laughs> That's reaction for you. Clock stop for the first down. 148. Now it starts up again. Clock ticking down. First and 10 at the 36-yard line. Campbell. Wide open at the 20-yard line is David Rutherford, and he takes it to the 16. And that puts Campbell up and over the 500-yard mark on the day. 135 remaining. Two timeouts for him. Ohio State leading by 12. Campbell to Jordan, and he stopped at the 11-yard line by Ben Lee. Two timeouts left, and they'll have to use one of them here. Purdue has just spent its second time out. One remaining for the Boilermakers. When play resumes, it'll be second down, six at the 12. Well, if they want to make any kind of game of it, they've got to get it in quick. And then, of course, they've got to go for the onside kick. They only have one time out left. Out of the shotgun now on second down and six. Somebody who's open, oh. and it's picked off in the end zone by Glenn Cobb, who nearly had one a moment ago. So Campbell's day ends in utter and complete frustration for Scott. But what a performance. 516 yards unofficially. Three touchdowns. Well, he came in as the number one passer in the country and certainly didn't disappoint anyone. Now Ohio State can afford to just run the clock out. Schleister downing it. At the 19, if Purdue so desires, they can take one more timeout. Timeout has been called by Purdue. They'll use their final one here. Right now, we will be going to Keith Jackson and Frank Royals at the Orange Bowl in Miami. And we will be giving you the final score of this one. As soon as it's over, it's academic right now as Ohio State leads Purdue 45 to 33. And Purdue out of timeouts. Travel arrangements made through promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. Today's game, 
a presentation of ABC Sports. 45-33, the bucket.